All right, combining loops and arrays, and we're going to get into that right now. We're going to actually go through one of these, and we're going to look at some of our, our Eclipse code. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do in this particular example, I'm going to actually create a, an array of integers called values, and it's going to have how many values? Five. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, let's do it, use a for loop, and this is how it's many times used, is we're going to initiate i equal to zero, and let i be less than or equal to values dot length. All right. So it's going to look at that. It's going to go, hey, what's values dot length? What is that equal to? Five. So it's going to be i is less than five, then iterate. Now, why is that important? Because it's going to be less than five because the iteration only goes through to what? Zero through four. There you go. You see why it's being less than? So it's just going to go, hey, let's take a look at that, and let's square them, and let's print those out to the screen. And that's what they're doing. Uh, let me see what the next example looks like. I think we're ready now to go back to Eclipse and look at some code. Before we start looking at these examples in Eclipse, do you have any questions so far? Yeah, this is all pretty... Do you feel comfortable with this? Yeah, and if you go through all of Bucky's videos, I mean, it's just like, he needs nails it. Much better than I did. He just nails it. So that's why I want to kind of get a little more, more of an edge on this stuff. So uh, I have a lot of array examples here, as you can see. I have um, array demo, and I have an array in a loop, and I have... Uh, an enhanced uh, an array, array or an enhanced for loop and a, a for demo and then I actually do an initiate array and so just a multi-dimensional array and and I want to make and then I even do a swing array so I'm actually seeing a swing away array method and how you can actually use an interface and you're gonna love this so much more than system dot out let me tell you it's gonna change your life so let me just go to array demo and see what we have here so in this particular array demo, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, an array, and uh, I'm going to declare that array. I'm going to initiate an array. Now, notice what he's doing here. In this particular example, the brackets are not what? On the integer, is it? The brackets are actually on the array. You see that? So you can do it both ways. Now, in Java, you're going to want to do it like this, or everybody's going to call you an idiot, but you're going to see this over and over again, done like this in other programming languages, where you actually has, have put the array uh, on, on the, the function name. So I declare a function, and I'm going to initiate it with, with 10 values. Hoo -hoo. And then I'm just going to load those values just by setting in the different uh, index indices. So many times when you have an indice and a value, that's what we call, call it a, 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 a key pair or a value pair um, expression. So for the zeroth value of the array, you get 100. First value of the array, you get 200, and all the way down to 9. Because you declared 10, so you start with 0, so it goes from 0 to 9. So you load all that in, and then what you do is you're going to print it all out. So you just spit it all back out to the screen by putting the array value 0 and index in there, and then it just basically spits back the value to you when you index it like that. So you do, do you see the interplay of the index? So whenever you assign an index inside an array of brackets, you can give it a number. Or you can spit it out by calling it by putting that number in the array. So there's two ways you can do that. Either to assign or either to uh, get back. And there you have it. And it should print all that out to screen. So it should say element at index 0 is should be 100. Uh, element at index 1 should be 1. Should be 200, excuse me. So let's run that program. And so that's pretty easy stuff. And uh, so that was my first array demo. So let's look at another one. Um, array in a loop. Let's try that one. Let's not... Okay, so what I'm going to do here now, now you see I'm declaring the array as you should in Java, right? With it having the curly brackets on the integer. So I declare this array and I'm going to say, hey, there's going to be 101 values in it. Hoo-hoo! And what I'm going to do is programmatically assign those values. And the way I'm going to programmatically assign those values is just say for each, each time I run through iteration, that i value, whatever it is, is going to be the index of the array. And I'm going to actually assign that to the array. So the zeroth value will be uh, 0, the 1 value will be 1, the 2 value will be 2, and so on. You see that? And then what I'm going to do in the next sequence is I'm going to create a sum number. I'm going to iterate through the length of the array again. See, I'm using that array dot length. So, so what that really reads is i is equal to 0, and i is less than 101, because array dot length is 101. Then I'm going to iterate each time. When sum starts up at 0, and so at the 0th value, I'm going to add that to a sum, which will be whatever that value is. The first value, I'm going to add that. The second value, I'm going to add that. So add, what I'm going to do is add all the, the values of the array together. And then I'm going to print that sum to the screen. So let's go ahead and run this program. It should just be one number. So what I did in this program, the first thing I did is I assigned uh, to, the, uh, to the array. I assigned to it uh, 
all, all the values of his iterative loop. And then what I did is I added all those values together and I got 5,050. Let's go to multidimensional arrays real quick. This is a lot of fun right here. The way you declare a multidimensional array is really easy in Java. In Flash, it's different. It's difficult. You have to do, in a sense, array of an array. And essentially, you're doing the same thing. But what you do in Java is you just put two brackets to have a double-dimensional uh, array. It's really cool. And so if I have a double-dimensional array, I'm going to call it names. And so what I do to instantiate that or to create that or declare that is to put brackets inside of brackets. So you have this, you have this large array around here. And then you have two separate arrays inside. So basically, there are two arrays of arrays. So in the first array, you have Mr., Miss, and Mrs. In the second array, you have Smith and Jones. So if I want to print out 0, 0 plus 1, 0, what's 0, 0? Well, 0, 0 would be what? Mr. All right. What's 1, 0? Well, 1, 0 would be the next array, would be Smith. And that would be the zeroth value. Zero is the first array right here. That's your first array, okay? Okay, then two is zero, one, two. That's miss, all right? Then the name would be the first, the second array would be the name, so that's one right here. And then one would be the next name, Jones. That would be Miss Jones, okay? That makes sense? Very important that you understand how double arrays are referenced. You may use them from time to time. I've used double arrays lots of times. I don't know why that came up. And let's go ahead and run this and see if this works. Uh, Mr. Smith and Miss Jones, is that what you expected? Great, good. So that's multidimensional arrays for you. Let's move on just a little bit. Um, we did a simple for loop, I believe, a swing array method. Let's, before we get that, let's say while demo. And so, a little bit, yes. But I want to talk about um, enhanced for demo. I, I skipped over that one, so let's get that real quick. What the enhanced for demo is, is a shortcut method for iterating through an array. We saw this actually in PHP, where they had certain methods in PHP that allows us just to iterate through an array. Because you use arrays so much, you typically iterate over them. Why do you have to include all these mechanisms and you don't? So this is in a sense like PHP, is a shorthand method for iterating through an array. So what we're going to do is create an integer array called numbers. We're going to go ahead and initialize that with the numbers 0 through 10. And then we're going to iterate through that array by just very simply using a for loop. But in this case, it only has two values. It's going to have what's called integer item, okay? And it's going to have numbers. That's the name of your array, okay? So in this case, we're going to put the system out. Count is item. So it's going to spit out the items in that number. So it knows there's 10. 10. It's going to iterate through all the 10 and just spit out the item's name. So that is a generic name. I could have called that anything. I could have called that babies, dogs, just like PHP. I don't know if you recall doing this in PHP. But it's the same thing. We put a generic name in there for the actual look, the, the uh, value. And it, it knew automatically that it's an array, so I'm going to index that and uh, just iterate over each one of those and spit out that value. And so let's go ahead and run this program so you can see it. And so I can say, once again, I have the advantage. You've seen this in PHP. Now, you may not remember it, but it's, it's in your brain there. So I can actually access it. And there it is. It's just it er iterates out the values. No big deal. So that's the enhanced for. Once again, if you're doing lots of work with arrays, it just makes the notation a lot easier, and, it, and you, you don't get yourself in trouble by accidentally getting the wrong index because it knows its array, it knows how many uh, numbers are in that array, and it, knows out and it knows to spit out the numbers that you need. So there you go. Going really fast here, I know, but once again, this is stuff you've seen before, and Bucky does a great job of it, so no reason to uh, belabor the point. Ready to move on to swing?